Shalom Elohim, Yisrael, Yehonathan, Dai, we with you here humbly so on Yahweh for Hebrews and Christians on what they call the 26th of November 2023 of the year of their Lord. And we are continuing on episode number 51 of the Bimilota Shali series in his own words. This is in Yahweh Shua's own words, so we cannot get it twisted. And um, today's <clears throat> topic is called Take Up Your Burden and Follow Me. Now, last week, um, you know, we always recap the previous week. We had a direct, direct Moses versus Yahshua interaction where this, the Pharisees who hound Yahshua follow him around directly opposed Yahweh's words against Moses and they used the example of divorce. It was <clears throat> so it's called um Katuna the Katuna Shalak. Okay, we talk about marriage and divorce. Katuna wa shalak, marriage and divorce. And we see that oftentimes we say that uh, our teachers uh misteach us and saying that era of the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the lawyers was that they were adding to the law. But in actually, believe it or not, most cases they were not. They were strictly enforcing the law, the law of Moshe. Because here, there is no adding to the law. They did not add to Moses. Moses did write a certificate of divorce. And they were enforcing that. So Yahweh Shua said, well, this is, came from Moses. It didn't come from, from me. It didn't come from Yahweh. That's not the original commandment. The original commandment was that you are the man and the woman become one flesh. So go back to see that entire uh, episode last week. Um, <clears throat> so let's, let's, let's show where the disconnect is. Uh, I want to begin before we go on to take up your burden and follow me. Where there really is a disconnect, we're not understanding when we read the narratives in the so called synoptic gospels. Now, in John 9 28 and 29, I want to begin with John 9 28 and 29. Yahweh, my prayer is for you to bless your elect, your chosen ones, to receive. Your words as you give it to your humble servant. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Uh, John 9, 28 and 29. With, this is what the Pharisees doing. It says, then they reviled him. I mean, they're really chastising and putting and, 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 and call themselves correcting Yahweh Shua. It says, reviled him. It said, you, um, and actually this is the blind man. I apologize. This is, they reviled the blind man. This is after Yahweh Shua healed the blind man. All right. Did a good work. He healed the blind man. Who would not want to have you or your loved one who was blind be healed? So he said, they reviled this man and said, you are his disciple, but we are Moshe's disciple. We know that Yahweh spoke to Moshe. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. So here they're saying directly. That they are no disciple of Yahweh Shua. They know that Yahweh spoke through Moshe and he did. But what they're saying is they are going to receive only what comes from Moses' mouth and, and they, to the letter. And where does that come from? Well, believe it or not, there is actually an ideology to that. Uh, go to Exodus 19 and 9. I'm going to flip over here to Exodus 19 and 9. And this is uh, before the giving of the so-called Ten Commandments. And this is when uh, we said, hey, you know what? We feared Yahweh's voice. We that we were just going to listen to you, Moses. Just you talk to us. They were fearful when Yahweh came down to actually marry us. All right. That's what the, the, the meeting at Sinai originally was supposed to be for. But we saw what happened. And it started from here. So, we go to um, Exodus 19 and 9. 
Uh, but let me go on verse 8. Then all the people answered together and said, All that Yahweh has spoken, we will do. So <clears throat> this is before Yahweh even said anything. They're like, hey, they gave Yahweh a blank check. And this is critical. Gave him a blank check. No, just just whatever he says, we're going to do it. That's what our leader said. All right. So Moses brought back the words of the people to Yahweh. He said, Yahweh, listen, you got a blank check. They're just going to do whatever you say. So this is, is, is um, Yahweh knows the heart. And so this is what Yahweh's response. And Yahweh said to Moshe, look, I come to you in the thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. This is critical. The people say, Yahweh, we're going to do whatever you say out of your mouth before he even told them anything. All right. And Yahweh's response says, you know what, then they're going to, I'm going to speak through you. I'm going to speak to you and they're going to believe you forever. This is directly from the book. Read it in Exodus 19 and 9. That they're going to believe Moshe forever. Okay. By the letter. And this is it's in the back. It bites them. It costs them in the end. And this is why we get to the point now when now the actual man himself, Yahweh Shua, is walking on the earth boots on the ground he's there and they are still going to stick to Moshe as opposed to who Moshe pointed to they're going to believe to the letter which caused them to miss the actual man Deuteronomy 6 4 and 7 this is where the the error comes from and actually uh, we know the, the Deuteronomy 6 and 7 uh, 6 and 4 but let's really go to the beginning of Deuteronomy 6 to the very first verse now this is the commandment and these are the stat these, now listen to this this is the commandment the commandment not commandments the commandment and what else and these are the statues and judgments that's in Deuteronomy 6 1 for you to read it for yourself at home which Yahweh you Elohim is commanded to teach you that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. That you may fear Yahweh your Elohim to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you and your son and your grandson in all the days of your life. And that your days may be prolonged. Keyword prolonged. Again, I have yet to have anyone contact me for the scripture that says in keeping the judgments and statues and all these things was going to give them eternal life. It's nowhere written, nowhere spoken of doing these things to the latter that you will get eternal life. He says that your days may be prolonged. Therefore, hear, O Yisrael, and be careful. This is a key word, be careful. To observe that it may be well with you and that you may multiply greatly as Yahweh Elohim, your fathers, has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey, multiplying greatly. Is there going to be any uh, marriage and keeping the marriage in, in the eternal kingdom? So we got two different things here. You're talking about being fruitful and multiplying on the earth greatly. And, and this is a land promise of milk and honey and all this kind of stuff. But in the eternal kingdom, there is no marriage and giving in marriage. But we're going to be just like the Malachim, the angels. It's two different things going on here, Israel, but you're not getting it. And more critically, our leaders, our Hebrew leaders are not getting this. And this is important because when we finish this Bimila Tar series, we're going to go into what the great deception is. It's going to see the entire world. And it's going to be this right here. He says, diligently listen. All right. Now, everybody knows Deuteronomy 6.4. Shema O Yisrael, Yahweh Al Elohim, Yahweh Echad, Yahweh is one. You will Ohab love Yahweh with all your leg, all your nefesh, and with all your strength. We say strength here, but this word is kind of not even translatable. It, 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 it means might, strength. It means the the the, the quirks and the the the, the, the unmeasurable things within you. Love Yahweh in that way. Now, this is what we're, we're missing. 
what we're missing is Yahweh saying, this is how you're supposed to love me. That letter of the law is distracting. And then we got Leviticus 19.18. And I'm not going to go there, but you go to Leviticus 19.18. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. We're to love our neighbor. So it's not about just we got to love Yahweh, love ourselves, and love our neighbor. That gets us to why Yahweh showed himself. And we are going to read it in Matthew 22. Yahweh himself, Yahweh Shua himself, out of his own words, the Mil Tashali quotes Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7, and Leviticus 19, 18. He puts it together, Matthew 22, 37 to 39. And it reads, This is Yahweh Shua himself speaking. You will love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart. With all your soul, with all your mind, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You will love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the Nabaim and the prophets, the Torah and the Nabaim, the law and the prophets. Yahweh Shuas, you say he's going to miss, he's misquoting the word, his own word. If you can't understand with your ears to hear that means your heart is not hearing do not run to Moshe for your salvation of eternal life you can go there if you want long life if you want eternal life love Yahweh love your neighbor as yourself that means you gotta love yourself that is the keeping of the entire law that is not Yehonathan Dawi saying that. I'm not twisting the scriptures. It came out of the tongue of Yahweh Shua himself. Let's even make it more tangible. Stick in, in, in Matthew. Go back a few verses. Go back to verse 7. And uh, chapter 7. And verse 12. And it's more commonly called the golden rule. And Matthew 7 and 12 says this. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. Because this is the Torah wa Nabaim. This is the law and the prophets. Can I make it any more clear than that? Can Yahweh Shua make it more clear than that? You want to keep the entire law, treat people the way you want to be treated. Doing to others as you have them doing to you. This is the law and the prophet. He's saying all the law, all the Torah, all those prophets. Micah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Hezekiah. I mean, not Hezekiah. Uh, Zechariah, Zephaniah, Eliah, Elisha. All of them. Jeremiah, Isaiah. All of them. John the Baptist. If you want to just summarize it, it comes from a circumcised heart. A subjection, humility, obedience without coveting, without fear. And they missed it with the actual Torah boots on the ground, looking them in the face, causing the blind to see and the deaf to hear and the lame to walk. And they missed it because they're going to... Say they are Yahweh's, I mean, they are Moses' disciples. They are his disciple. Yet, because they did not keep the true essence of the law, they did not hear diligently, like he said, diligently hear. And then in Revelation, over and over again, he says, He who has an ear to hear. I'm praying, Yahweh, that you have an ear to hear, Yisrael, with my few, praise Yahweh, 69 followers. The law and the prophets is the golden rule of Matthew 7 and 12. Yahweh Shua summarized it in Matthew 22, 37 to 39. And who is your neighbor? He told you with the Good Samaritan parable. That's who your neighbor is. He who goes by the golden rule. Who stopped by to help. It wasn't about skin color. It wasn't about beating your chest talking about you genetic Hebrew and all this stuff. Was the Good Samaritan a genetic Hebrew? He was what we call culture vultures. They hated the Samaritans. 
But that's who your neighbor is. The one who has a heart that fears Yahweh. Doesn't matter what he or she looks like. And this is what's going to get the entire world deceived in the end. Because are all these Hebrews and Shebrews and New Brews and wannabe Brews waking up and trying to go back, take their loved ones back to the desert of disobedience, 40 years of our desert of disobedience, where we accumulated 666 judgment statutes and laws that were counted against us. So we didn't get it. Because in, key, in enforcing this law, what did Yahweh show up when he was born of Miriam? What did he face in his ministry? A nation impoverished, of broken families, with loose divorce laws, uh, children without parents after war, people hungry, despised, depressed, people uh, infirm people imprisoned how in the world can can Yahweh's law produce that when he says following his laws is going to give you fatness and gladness flowing with milk and honey being the head and not the tail that's what following the law by the letter will give you long life and happiness milk and honey fatness and gladness that's what the law is supposed to give you yet everywhere Yahweh shows turning he's got to heal somebody yeah, where he turns, somebody's hungry. Somebody's sick. Somebody's depressed. All under the law. Then apparently, there's a disconnect. What they have is a misteaching of the law. Where was the law jubilee being kept? Where everyone is no longer in debt. They were not following even the correct letter of the law of Moses even because they did no one will be sick and no one will be poor and even with that we were promised long life now that brings us to today's topic take up your burden and follow me I hope we're clear on this because you're going to have to be clear when we finish this series we're going to I'm going to show you how that is what's going to be the 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 fruit on a tree dangled before you by Hasatan like he did to Mother Hawa. It comes back full circle. We pick up our narrative there, Mark 10, 17 to 20. Mark 10, 17 to 20. We have here what, what people call the rich young ruler. Oh, y'all, help me. So we pick it up here, Mark 10, 17. Now, as it he was going out on the road. One came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what will I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, this is after he did the, corrected his, his uh, disciples who, uh, when he was uh, blessing the children and, and showing how important the children were. And he made, and y'all sure made strong, harsh judgment against those who harm children. Of course, the disciples didn't get it and rebuked the children who tried to come to Yahweh Shua. Yahweh Shua rebuked them. And here we are today, in, uh, November 26, 2023, not getting it. We need to teach. Uh, we, go, we did Deuteronomy 6. If I continue on, you see Yahweh Shua says, teach them this Torah diligently, day and night. Why are you walking by the way? Teach these children the essence of of giving, loving, trusting, obedience, subjection, faithfulness, loyalty, thinking good thoughts, doing good works. This is what he said. And we're not getting it. So the rich young ruler, hey, he liked that. This is a young man and he's got money. He's like, he's he's in good stead. He, so he runs up to him. All right, now, how can I inherit this et eternal life? Now, I want you to realize this. He said eternal life. Bimino Tashali, in his own words, what did Yahweh Shua say? So we can't get it twisted. What came from the man's mouth? Who is the Torah? Why do you call me Tob? 
no one but one that is Yahweh is good. Okay? So that's important. You say, no, no. There's only one so called good person. That's Yahweh. So I'm either what I say I am, or I'm just a good man. I'm either Yahweh, or I'm not. So already the man is being corrected. You're not going to put Yahweh Shua down on the level of a mere prophet. All the prophets, they were good men. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Moses, these were good men. But Yahweh Shua said, you're not going to call me good. I'm not on the level of any other prophet. I'm not even on the level of John the Baptist. I'm either Yahweh or I'm not. I either came directly from the, the one who created you or I'm not. So already, you know, we, we, most people are missing that. The young man is corrected from the beginning. I'm not just a good man. Because you're talking about eternal life. That's why you came to me. You asked the question about eternal life. A good man cannot give you eternal life. Only the life giver can give you eternal life. So he got checked from the beginning. And then his answer continues. You know the commandments. You know the Torah. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. You know, he just ripped off a few of the top ten. And he said, said to him, Teacher, Rabbi, all these things I have kept from my youth. So he's saying, hey, I already got that. My resume is stuck. Here it is. Here's my resume, uh, Rabbi. I'm, I'm set. I'm straight. Now, where's, my, where, where, where's the eternal life? So Yahweh Shua, looking at him, loved him. He had, Yahweh Shua's heart was touched because he knew this man's heart. And it hurt Yahweh Shua's heart because he knew what the ultimate outcome is this going to be. Here we go. Remember, the title is Take Up Your Burden and Follow Me. So he said, one thing you lack. I mean, he got all the law, right? It has been clarified that he has the law. He says, go your way, sell whatever you had and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come take up your burden and follow me. Now you see how the man asked about eternal life. The law gives you life now. He says, do you want now he's saying treasures in heaven then that's when you got to do this get rid of all that earthly stuff that you got in your righteousness you didn't say the man got rich by defrauding people you got that in your righteousness now you want eternal life you're going to have to get rid of all that and follow me take up your burden and follow me and we all have different burdens because most of us aren't rich, not like that. But we do have things that we rightfully gotten, legally forgotten, that get in the way of receiving Yahweh Shua completely. Because if you, in order for him to follow Yahweh Shua, he would have to have faith. Because before he had no wake up in the morning, he didn't have to worry about whether he was going to eat or drink. What was he going to wear? Whether his, he was going to have a roof over his head. This man had no worries, no concerns about the horizontal fleshly gains of his life. What he was looking for was, hey, at some point I'm going to be old. How am I going to get to the next life? Well, wow. You're no longer going to have air conditioning and heat and a, a new car every two years. You're no longer going to be able to eat delicacies. These things are fine for long life, but they don't give eternal life because we still, rich or poor, get old. We still, they're still going to be rich and poor alike, go to the grave. What then? Well, he was offering him now the eternal future. What did the man do? But he was sad at this word. And went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. There it is. There's the rub. 
Are you getting it? The rub. The law of Moshe promised now. All these good things in the right way, but keeping it diligently and fervently sees past the flesh of the law and sees the rook of the law, the non-seeing part. And the non-seeing part is the part of faith and following Yahweh Shua wherever his voice tells you in your heart we all have different burdens that thing that you cherish and love so much may be the one thing that Yahweh Shua was saying hey okay put that before put it on the altar and follow me I got you every day Wake up, stop worrying about this and worrying about that. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, the laws are a horizontal measurement. You can measure and compare one man to another, one woman to another, one child to another based on what they're doing and not doing. But in following Yahweh Shua in the heart, you cannot measure a person's heart. You cannot measure a person's spirit emotions good or bad where is that heart and Yahweh sure knew that this man was comfortable in his own righteousness by doing what he was taught to do by his parents but not just like the scribes and the Pharisees the Sadducees and the lawyers who handled Yahweh Shua daily not getting it even his own disciples didn't get it when they were rebuking the children and today, Hebrews are waking up worldwide and they're immediately going right back to a formula that has a termination, has an expiration date. There's an expiration date on the laws of Moses and it expires when you expire. When you take your last breath, it does not lead to eternal life. Otherwise, Moshe would have brought us into the, the kingdom. He didn't. Yahushua did. The lawgiver stayed on the outside. And everyone who's, who's going to see Moses is there, is called themselves a disciple of Moses, likewise will be on the outside of the kingdom. Moses didn't end up on the outside of the kingdom. We know that. He's a symbol of those who, dis, who measure their righteousness to Yahweh with laws. Whatever you say, Yahweh, I'm going to do it. I got this. And our leaders were Edomites who lost, Esau lost his birthright and sought with many tears to get back into the kingdom with the law. And we're going to show that. Esau sought to get back, not with the spirit, but with legalism. This is what he sought to do. See, the thing about it is, these laws, they are founded by Yahweh. And if we try to keep them without Yahweh sure, then we're going to be lacking something. And this is what this man was lacking. Because the law, and with all the, the fleshly gains of it, equals nothing without Yahweh sure. Because if you keep it, yes, you will have benefits. But without Yahweh Shua, it's just a heavy burden. Let's read Psalm 144. Psalm 144. Praise Yahweh. Mm, mm, mm. Eleven to fifteen. Let's see what the psalm. We know this was a man to Yahweh's own heart. We know Dawid's heart loved Yahweh, Yahweh, because the record tells us that. That's what the record says. He loved them with all his heart, might, and soul. What did he have to say? Psalm 144, 11 to 15. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners whose mouth speaks lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. That our daughters may be as pillars, sculpted in palace style. Yeah, we got some fine sisters built well. That our barns may be full supplying all kinds of produce that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields 
that our oxen may be well, that there be no breaking in or going out, that there may be no outcry in the streets. Happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose mighty one is Yahweh. Yes, there's fatness and gladness, milk and honey, and obedience and subjection to Yahweh. That's what we're supposed to Y'all wants us to be happy and joy now. Not at the expense of eternal life. Don't be like Eve and try to get it all now. Instead of waiting on y'all. In, 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 in patience do we possess our souls. Mark 10, 23 and 27. Mark 10, 23 to 27. And Yahweh Yeshua, looking around, said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of Yahweh. After this young ruler walked away, Yahweh Yeshua lifted up his voice and talked to his people. It's hard if you have all this stuff now to enter to the kingdom. And the disciples were astonished at his words. Yahushua answered again. Just in case they thought he stuttered. To make sure they got it the first time. He who has an ear hand him here. Children. How hard it is. For those who trust in riches. Now see now he's saying trust in riches. Because being rich. Is not a sin. We just read. In Psalm 144. The blessings and the goodness. Of those who trust in Yahweh. And have riches. So that's why Yahushua says, okay. Children, how hard is for those who trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh? You have these things, you don't trust in these things. So if you work out at the gym and you're physically strong, three men come attack you. You don't need to pray. Oh, I'm strong. I can handle these three men. So you're going to rely on your sword, your talents, your gifts, your blessings to do the, the work and the will of Yahweh. When he says we just deliver gas. Whatever Yahweh gives you, we must subject it, receive it in humility, subject it to Yahweh for his fruitfulness in us. It's not about us. It's not about us. It is not a sin to have riches, but if you put your trust in it, you're not going to make it. That's what Yahweh Shua said. Think about it. And, 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 and this shows you how the teaching was bad that we were getting at that time. Because the disciples were astonished at his words. They're like, wait a minute. All of our goal is to do well, to be rich. That's why they were astonished at what he was saying. Wait a minute. We want to be rich too. Everybody wanted to be rich. Everybody is naming it and claiming it. Blabbing it and grabbing it. They thought that's what they were supposed to do. Because under the strict laws and rules of Moses, you're going to have milk and honey. Fatness and gladness. We just read what Dawi said in Psalm 144, 11 through 15. We just read it. But not getting it. Not getting it. Did rich, did wealth save Abraham? He was the wealthiest, probably about the wealthiest man on everywhere he went. He was nobody more wealthy than Abraham. Did it protect his wife, not once but twice, from being violated by uh, kings who wanted to violate her? Did that protect him? Did the money protect him? Did it protect Isaac? On the altar when he was about to be sacrificed, did, did he get spared because he was rich? Did it keep Jacob, all his wealth? Did it keep his family from starving in, in the desert of famine? They had to go to, is, to Egypt, to Misraim, to save his family. Money didn't save, save us. When the famine came, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were all wealthy. And none of them was saved by their wealth. They were saved by their faith and obedience in Yahweh. Everybody likes to quote Deuteronomy 28. 
when they want to talk about, yeah, this the Yahweh this, this is the chosen of the black man. It's all about us, and this identifies us, and it does identify us. But Yahweh ain't choose us by no uh, melanin content of our skins. I'm gonna get that to be clear. But yes, Deuteronomy 28 does um, identify who Yahweh's people are. Uh, let me read those first 14 verses. Now it will come to pass if you diligently obey the voice. See, it once again it says diligently because they're not really getting it. Superficially, obedience will get you stuff now. Diligent obedience will get you eternal stuff later. He who has an ear, let him hear. Otherwise, they would just say, hey, he who obeys the voice. It says diligently obey the voice. Yahweh's voice is not flat. It is not linear. It is multidimensional. And if you don't have a diligent ear, you're only going to get the superficial understanding of it. Obey Yahweh, get stuff. That's true. But that stuff will end when you end. Or maybe even before that. Diligently hearing means you're hearing with the heart. Not the, the two uh, organs on this, each side of your head. If you diligently obey the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to observe carefully. Not just look at. Observe carefully. That means you are really looking at the layers of this thing. And all his commandments which I command you today. That Yahweh Elohim will set you on high above all nations of the earth. All these things, blessings will come on you and overtake you. Because you obey the voice of Yahweh Elohim. Blessed will you be in the city. Blessed will you be in the country. Blessed will you be in the fruit of your body. The produce of your ground. And the increase of your herds. Increase of the cattle. And the offspring of your flocks. Blessed will be in your basket. In your kneading bowl. Blessed will you be when you come in. And when you, blessed will you be when you go out. Yahweh will cause your enemies to do rise against you. To be defeated before your face. And they will come against you one way. And flee before you seven ways. Yahweh will command a blessing on you. In your storehouses. And all in which you had set your hand. He will bless you in the land which Yahweh Elohim is giving you. Yahweh will establish you as the Kodesh people to himself. He has sworn to you to keep your commandments and Yahweh Elohim walk in his ways. That all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of Yahweh. And they will all be afraid of you. And Yahweh will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, in the produce of your ground, in the land which Yahweh Elohim swore to your fathers to give you. Yahweh will open you the his good treasure, the heavens to give you the rain, the land, and the season to the blessed of the work of all your hand. You will lend to many nations, and you will not borrow. And Yahweh will take, make you the head and not the tail. You will be above only and not beneath. And if you will heed the commandments of Yahweh Elohim, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, you will not turn aside from the any words which I command you this day. And to the right or to the left, go after the good, the mighty ones, and serve them. Yahweh Shua came into the land where none of this was happening because they were not careful to diligently observe the words that came out of his mouth. And then you're waking up and doing the same thing. Conduct yourself like the good Samaritan did. That's what Yahweh Shua said. Because that's what your neighbor is. And that's what we're supposed to do. And he said in Matthew 22, 37 to 39, this is the law and the prophets. He said in Matthew 7, 12, this is the law and the prophets. He said it out of his own mouth. Quoting Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7. Quoting Leviticus 19 and 18. And you're still not getting it. You would have, Are we equating ourselves to Ishmael and Esau? Because we forget that they had they got blessed too by Yahweh. Genesis 16, 10 through 12, and Genesis 17, 20 and 21. Ishmael got blessings today. Yahweh blessed them with the fatness of the earth today. Now they had, he said they're gonna have to fight for it. Esau likewise. Genesis 3, um, Genesis 3 and 6. No, I mean uh it's Genesis 17, 20, 21. And then Esau's blessings go to Genesis 27, 38 to 40. I'm not going to go there because I don't want to get this too long, but read Genesis 27, 38 to 40. 
Esau got his blessing of now. Now he was going to have to fight for it by the sword. So we see that Esau and Ishmael, our brothers, also got blessings today of fatness and gladness. Uh, is Jacob equal to Esau? Is Jacob equal to, to Ishmael? Everybody gets blessings about stuff on here. Everybody gets two cars in a garage. Everybody gets four weeks of vacation. Really? So that's the... It, well, okay, what happens when the famine comes? Then where are you? Who is the covenant through? The covenant was not for long life. It's for eternal life. We are much better than they. We have a higher calling, a higher promise. It's not just about uh, getting your stuff now, Eve. It's not just about having now, Eve. Stop following bad teaching. The teachers were the Edomites. In John eleven forty eight, I don't like to use up. Don't like this to be too long, but I want to read John eleven forty eight. Talk after Yahweh Shua doing all these great things. The scribes and Pharisees were not converted. They didn't change. They're just scared. They're gonna lose their stuff. John 11, 48. And this is what they said. If we let him alone, if we let this man alone, Yahweh sure, like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. They say, listen. This man is doing good stuff. They're going to believe in him. He must be the Messiah, the anointed one that we've been waiting for. Let's follow him too. They're like, no. They're going to follow him and the Romans are going to take away our position that they gave us. So we got these Yafet mutts from Yafet who, who gives Esau, the red man, the Edomite, the red hairy beast, gave them charge over us. That's what they did. There was not Hebrew leaders over us. We know Herod was Edomite. The record says straight out, Herod the Edomite. And he, let's, um, and he sought with many tears, the record says, Hebrews 12, 17, to get the, 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 his, his birthright back. But he didn't repent in his heart. Hebrews 12 and 17. So what he's trying to do is, is mislead Jacob. Dangling that, that fruit from the tree like his daddy the devil did in the Garden of Eden with Eve. Dangled it. And today that's the law being dangled. Keep this, have this now. And get all you want and all you can now. It's about now and lose your soul later. We know these were demonic Edomites over us. John 8, 33. Stay, stay, stay right there. And John, John, they said out of the, this is what they said out of their own mouths. This is what their, our leader said out of their own mouths. Then they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. So how can you say you will be made free? They're, and they are right. Esau is from Abraham's seed and they are right again. They were never in bondage. Yaakov, the one who who has the eternal covenant with Yahweh, the covenant of eternal life, we're the ones that went to Misraim. We're the ones that were in bondage. Esau didn't go into Egypt for bondage. They did go in there to hound us again. They did do that, and they snuck out with us to keep hounding us for error. The tares always there with the wheat. So they said out of their own mouths, we know in Genesis 15, 13 and 14, Yahweh told Abraham, your seed's going to go into bondage. And we went. But Esau's seed did not. So here they are, the leaders right here out of their own mouths saying, we're from Esau and we're from Abraham. And we were never in bondage. And that who was misleading us. Yes, you're cold. 
in Genesis 25, 29 to 34, tricked Esau to have it now for his fleshly gain. Had that food and bread now for fleshly gain. And record says he ate it and walked away and despised his birthright. He didn't respect it. So what happened to doing to others, you had them doing to you. Eve was tricked with something to eat to lose what she had eternally for now and Yahweh turned it back on on, on the seed of Hasatan he turned it right back on him so now here I am humbly under the anointing and blessings of Yahweh on this humble broadcast this humble station saying do not be deceived with, with a good offering from a wicked person to receive blessings now in your patience. You possess your soul. In 2 Ezra 6 9, 2 Ezra 6 9 says, The end of Esau's world is the beginning of your cobs. Let him have it now. He's on top. You're renting from him. You buy a house, he owns the property. He tells you you have COVID, stay in your house. He sends you to war. He, he miseducates you. He undereducates you. He poisons you. He poisons the air, the water, the soil. You cannot eat or drink anything pure or clean. His laws are justice, just for us, them. Not for us, but it's for them. They're designed to keep you imprisoned and poor and impoverished. This is his world. We're just being miserable in it. This is why Yahweh Shua said he has to come to make the first last and the last first. If things were right now, he wouldn't have to come and fix it. We're supposed to be on the back end because we have not lived according to the spirit of the Torah. So how do, you know, a uh, 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 in Matthew 5, we call it the Beatitudes. We one of, it was the beginning, one of the earlier lessons in this series. We didn't get it. Yahweh Shua on a mountain, teaching the spirit of the law. Juxtaposed against Moshe on a mountain, teaching the letter of the law. Did you catch that? In the beginning of his ministry. On the mountain, teaching the spirit of the law, the Beatitudes. And in verse 6, blessed is he who hungers and thirsts for righteousness, for he will be filled. Why will someone hunger and thirst for righteousness? Because they're not righteous. If you're righteous, you don't hunger and thirst for it. We hunger and thirst for it because Yahweh Shua will fill us with his righteousness. His righteousness. Do not trust in the physical riches of now today. Because if you make it up to the top now, what is you what did Yahweh Shua say? Will he find faith on the earth? The first will be last. So you want to be first and be on top now? Where are you going to be put? We're on the back end, on the bottom end, because we did not keep the spirit of the law keep it and not be deceived so how do we get how do the other ones get in our last scripture going to um read from Ezekiel because it's not just about us it's not about us at all but Yahweh made provisions for everyone but how do the rest of them get in how does the the the, the reformed Edomites and Ishmaelites and the Japheth tight. How did the rest of the nations get in? Ezekiel 37 and 16 talking about bringing the kingdoms together the two sticks coming together and verse 16 of chapter 37 and it reads <clears throat> I got to read 15 and again the word of Yahweh came to me saying as for you son of man take a stick for yourself and write on it for Yehuda." And for the Eladim of Yisrael, his companions, then take another stick and write on it for Yusef 
and the stick of Ephraim and for all of the house of Israel and his companions. You see that? We're going to have companions with us. Those of Yehuda and those of Israel. And each of us are going to have companions with us. That come together and these two sticks come together. That's how the rest of you who are not Hebrew get in. You get in through us, Yahweh's covenant peoples. Yes, we failed him, but those who are waking up in spirit and in truth will teach this thing the right way, the correct way, the righteous way, not the legal way. And those who take this word and trust this word will join in with us, the companions of those who follow us. Remember, Yahweh said, those who curse you will be cursed, and those who bless you will be blessed. So those who come with us and receive this word of Yahweh HaMashiach, the unleavened word, will also make it. Matthew 11, 30, Yahweh Shua says, Take on me, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So Yisrael, I pray, take up your burden, whatever it is, and receive Yahweh Shua. Shalom Alakim, Yisrael, Yahweh bless you and keep you in his face shine on you. And may his countenance lift you and give you peace. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh Shua. Hallelujah. Yahweh.